Today we'll discuss a fascinating topic that inspired many Hollywood screenplays and that is still subject of some hot discussions. Two words, one concept and thousands of people who talk about it. Yes, you got it. The star of this video is artificial intelligence. There is so much hype around it and I keep hearing some common questions like what is AI? How does it differ from human intelligence? What do you mean by neural networks, machine learning and deep learning? So, where are the answers? Here's the challenge. I'll try to put them as simply as I can. So keep watching until the end, put a like and subscribe if you think I managed to win the challenge. Enjoy! Giving a definition of artificial intelligence is not easy, especially for its many areas of application. But I like the one provided by SAS Software, which states, artificial intelligence is the science of training systems to emulate human tasks through learning and automation. Basically, we can assume that AI-based software provides a probabilistic output, different from the deterministic output that is generated by traditional software. Indeed, software developed following AI principles has a decision-making autonomy that, to a common observer, might seem identical to human abilities. However, it's not even remotely comparable to the intuitive abilities of the individual. If we take the literal meaning of intelligence, we realize how many abilities the human mind has and the Trecani Encyclopedia defined it as a set of psychic and mental faculties that enable human to think, understand, or explain facts or actions, elaborate abstract models of reality, understand and be understood by others, judge, and make human capable of adapting to new situations and of modifying the situation when it presents obstacles to adaptation. Currently, there isn't any software that incorporates all these capabilities. So you are legitimate to ask, is it appropriate to define it as intelligence? True, and it actually would be more accurate to describe it as a great simulation capability. Ever since we started talking about artificial intelligence and the first robots simulating human movements were built, Many people immediately thought, robots will replace human beings. And the movies dealing with this topic certainly didn't help to imagine a different scenario, right? However, those who know the subject well know that machines will never be able to reason like human beings. Moreover, it's not the goal of the research and development studies of this technology. AI emulates some human senses, such as sight and hearing, but there are aspects of human reasoning that are not replicable to artificial intelligence, such as the abilities to define goals and reasons for achieving them, abstract knowledge, or generate empathic feelings independently. A computer scientist and philosopher, Judia Perl, winner of the Turing Prize in 2011 and known for defending the probabilistic approach to artificial intelligence, affirmed the day when AI will be able to approximate human intelligence is near, but its capabilities must be judged on three levels of cognitive ability – seeing, doing, and imagining. AI today works only at the lowest level, which is seeing. I definitely agree with that. And you? If you agree, put a like. And if you don't, well, like it anyway. The idea behind the concept of AI is the attempt to emulate the human intellect capabilities. Where to start then? Simple. From the complex system of neural networks that allow individuals to elaborate activities such as reasoning, learning, reproduction of sounds, words, images and the ability to act. In the 40s of the 20th century, the first prototype of an artificial neuron was created. And since then, more and more elaborate systems of artificial neural networks capable of learning and adapting to different purposes have been realized. Artificial
Artificial neural networks are based on computational models that recreate the typical connections of biological neural networks. The structure is composed of nodes and interconnections in the form of flow. The data are inserted in the input layer, cross the hidden layer, and generate an output in line with the initial design objective. Once the connections are built, we pass to the phase of learning, where the insertion of a set of data happen. And, in the case of supervised learning, we also supply the possible final output. Otherwise, in the unsupervised learning, we let the system learn from the generated outputs. The following infographic compares the biological neuron and the artificial neuron, based on what we've just analyzed. Then, we can move forward to deep learning architectures, which are more complex features of neural networks. They involve a much larger number of hidden layers, useful to identify the characteristic of the data. Imagine that in deep learning architectures, we can find, for the most complex cases, more than 150 hidden layers. Okay, let's assume everything is clear. I'm sure you are following me. But in case you're not, comment below and let me know why. Then, there's a key point to highlight. What are the application areas of neural networks and deep learning in business? Well, solutions related to neural networks and deep learning architectures can be applied in most companies. Of course, the greater the amount of data to be managed, the better the response given at output. Some of the applications are natural language processing, which is useful for interactions between computers and humans. In addition to voice recognition, NLP understands and generates natural language. In business organizations, this translates into data optimization through document synthesis and information classification, or computer vision, which is the classification of objects in an image through algorithms able to recognize them, identifying the shape and the color, and extrapolate them from the context. The application of image recognition involves different areas, such as security, surveillance, and control of goods. Do you apply any of the above in your company? Leave a comment below and let me know. When these enormous potentials are translated into software, we enter the field of machine learning. Teaching machines to learn automatically and act without being explicitly programmed is a major achievement that allows faster turnaround times. How does the learning take place? By analyzing data and adapting patterns. Patterns allow the learning through an experiential path similar to the human one. For example, discarding mistakes and promoting correct actions. By identifying these patterns, you can build an algorithm that adapts models and improves their ability to make predictions. However, when working with software structured with this technology, you must remember, the results are not certain, but probable, and it is necessary to carefully evaluate the percentage of data correctness. My dear friends, the overview of AI cannot end without clearing up one last doubt. When was AI born and who invented it? The scientific community anonymously recognizes an official date of birth for AI. 1953, the year in which a seminar held in New Hampshire decreed the Discipline Foundation on the basis of important contributions on the subject. Instead, when we think about a name to associate to AI, we cite Alan Turing, and his article, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. Because actually its application has been realized with the birth of the first computers, which were well suited to render the concept of intelligence associated with machines. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Plus, head over to deltalogics.blog and stay up to date with all about the digital world. See you soon. Ciao.